Okay, I think though uh, we're actually going to start from a new shape just so that you get used to um, kind of working with the line tool. Okay, so again, kind of look at your uh, reference imagery to get an idea of the shape you need. Starting at one edge here, we're going to initially get this first ridge in. And then we've got a slight curve here. Which then end up, ends up going into another curve and then down to complete the step. Okay, so we go to modify in line and then we'll fill it this curve here and then fill it this curve and we'll fuse these ones together Oops. and weld them same for this fuse and weld I'm just going to move that on top of there and select those two and weld. Now this looks like it's got a bit more curvature on it so we'll just pull that round to there. And we're starting to get our shape just about right there. In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll just fill it that one once and fill it that one once. Fuse those and weld those. And we're starting to get a rough shape there. Okay, so we just need to do the same as what we did before, which was create a line for our um, model to sweep across. Now, if you turn on snap and then just snap to each corner of this shape. And turn off snap with S and there's our shape there. If we go to modify sweep and then pick and get shape there let's change that to an easier color to use and you can see we've got our shape there. One thing we're going to do I'm just going to come into uh, sorry select the original spline Go to the line here and just pull that down a bit to give us that extra detail there. And remember if it's not quite right, come over to sweep parameters and you can change your alignment to get that right. And you can even tweak on the x-axis here or move these across to get it kind of just right. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is cut in these areas here. So these individual kind of gaps in here. And then we're going to add the thickness to the shape as well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add an edit poly modifier on top of our object here. We're then going to go to edge mode and we're just going to delete out some of these unnecessary loops that we have. That's one issue with the sweep modifier. It's not exactly um, efficient sometimes 
So you do need to go through your model and just clear up. So if we just delete those, hold control and hit remove. We could probably get rid of this one as well. Hold control and hit remove. So that will do for, for now. And then what we're going to do is, I just want you to select this area here and just add in a connect just set to one with both settings on zero this is so that we can actually use symmetry now so we only have to model in uh, one of these areas here okay so we'll actually just delete this one side and apply a symmetry modifier let's flip it there We'll come back down to our edit poly and we use show end result so that we can see uh, what it's going to look like when we finish modeling it. Okay, so to model in this area, what we're going to do is we're going to need a few more cuts. So we're going to add, first of all, make the selection of these, of this whole area here, and we're going to go to connect and we're going to add two segments. I'm going to pinch to get the measurement right and actually that should be okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go to edit swift loop and we're going to add in a cut there and we want a couple of cuts for the ridges as well. So now we can delete those three and we have the kind of basic starting point for our shape and then it's just about tweaking these to get the shape just right if you want both sides to be exactly the same if you select the two verts press R to go to scale you can move them like so be more precise you can do this too and that looks about right okay so we're starting to get there with this shape now So the last thing we need to do is actually get some thickness into it. Okay, so the next areas we're going to add are some thickness and also fix the back area here. So work in edit poly with your symmetry above obviously. Go to edge mode and select these edges here and we'll just pull those out. And there we go, that gives us the thickness in there. And then on the back area here we really want this to just be flat because this is where the wardrobe would sit flushed against the wall. So we're going to have to do a bit of tweaking. So just select, say, these two edges and we'll bridge them together. And we'll just zoom in, select these two, and hit bridge, these two, bridge, and those two, bridge. And then if we loop by holding shift and just clicking two so you need to end up with that as your selection then if you hold shift and drag then they should just join together like so giving you that back edge that we need you might want to just pull that out to there as well to be on the safe side okay so we're getting there now with that that shapes pretty much done I would say. Okay, so the next thing we're going to model is the handles um, and the locks here. Um, and to do that, we're going to use the sweep effect again. So we're going to create a line 
and obviously you can use your big Im image here to figure out exactly where they need to go and the kind of size they need to be. Okay, so start around here, hold shift to keep the line completely straight. And I'm just going to do half of it like that because then I can just clone that half over. I'm going to set this to smooth. And that one to Bezier Corner. So, then if we just select that, we've got a mirror tool here, which can copy that across like this. Select these two vertices here and hit weld. And you can always tell if something's not welded because um, you need to have one yellow point, which is a start point. If I just unweld that, so I have two, and that will show me that won't work properly. So if I select those two and hit weld, now you can see there's only one, which means that's one spline. Obviously the other way to tell is to come to spline and hit it, and you'll see that is all nice, just one piece. Now I'm just going to go to scale mode here on these. Make sure I'm set to use selection center, otherwise it won't work properly. And just scale, say those into there. Okay, now it's a kind of circle shape, so if I come to, well in fact I won't even need to do that, if I just, with my spline selected, go to sweep, select cylinder, and then obviously I need to tweak. The length and fitness. Just pull my shape out so it's there. Make sure all my smoothing's on. And I can use interpolation here to set the amount of steps. And I'll just check the scale of that is relatively right. I think it could do with being a bit smaller. And then I can apply an edit poly on top and just tweak this shape as I want to. So, and just for optimization's sake, I'm going to get rid of some of these loops. Okay. then come to extended primitives and just use a capsule here to create this other shape. And 
if I scan it, like so. And again, just for optimization's sake, I might as well take out some of these. Okay, so we're getting there with that now. Can now clone this over, set it to instance. And now the only other thing we need to do is create this kind of lock area. I think I'll probably use a normal map for that though. The other option would be to simply make a basic shape for it to sit on. If I use a box for instance. And then just use edit poly and add in a couple of cuts. And then just kind of tweaked this shape. And then I can use the texture set on top of that. And I'll just go by and go here and delete that back area. And again, we'll just clone that over. A good way of kind of when it comes to finalizing this lock shape is to actually get the shape of the lock as a texture, apply that on top, and then you can tweak the shape afterwards to match.